Good afternoon. I'm going to get everybody called to attention so that we make sure we have enough time for our speakers as well as questions and answers. Um, so if you guys are wondering if you came to the right session, you did. This is going to be the best one of all of them. So. <laughs> So I'm Jennifer Tremel. I'm an interventional cardiologist here, and I run our Women's Heart Health Program um, and have been fortunate to speak here before. Um, today I'm simply moderator, um, and we have three stars speaking to you um, this afternoon about kind of various topics. Um, the first one is Dr. Vanita Chandra, um, and she is a vascular surgeon. And um, we've been fortunate to work with her in women's heart health. And uh, I think peripheral arterial disease is something we don't always think of. We think of the heart, but we forget all the other vessels um, that are connected to the heart can get disease as well. Um, I wanted to highlight that we have ABIs going on um, in the exhibit hall. And if you don't know what those are, you will by the time Dr. Chandra gets done talking. Um, so if you haven't had your ABIs done, you'll be able to do that during the next break. So um, the other thing I want to mention is that we'll um, try to do Q&A. We're going to have people save questions till the speaker's done, um, and then we'll have a brief time. Um, but we are on a kind of close timetable, um, so we'll keep moving along. So Dr. Chandra, thank you. Okay, thank you. Um, Thank you, everyone. Thanks to the, um, the program for asking me to come uh, talk about a topic that's really near and dear to my heart, obviously, as a vascular surgeon. And as, I've, as Dr. Tremel mentioned, this is a topic that unfortunately hasn't gotten enough attention, in my opinion. So I'm very excited always to talk about it a little bit. Uh oh, it's doing its own thing. So this is maybe a picture of who you may think about when you think about heart disease or cardiovascular disease and um, certainly accurate an older um, slightly obese gentleman maybe actually having an acute coronary event at the moment um, but unfortunately this is also a picture of cardiovascular disease and this is what um, a lot of the efforts of the Women's Heart Health as well as the Go Red campaign in the, um, from the American Heart Association have done amazing efforts in terms of increasing the awareness and, and, and realizing that cardiovascular disease is not just an older man's disease um, but also affects women. And there's a lot of good reasons why they've focused on women and heart disease. Um, heart disease kills six times as many women as breast cancer. Um, it is actually the number one killer of women over 40 in the United States. Um, and more lives are killed from heart disease than any, any form of cancer. So a big deal, an important problem to be focusing on. One in four women, unfortunately, pass away from heart disease. But I'm not going to talk about the heart today. Um, the, the heart is part of this larger cardiovascular system, as Dr. Tremel mentioned. It's this interconnected, intimately associated web of blood vessels that goes to the rest of the body. And all of those blood vessels actually can develop the same disease processes that can, that can um, that develop in the heart. Um, they can happen in all of these other blood vessels, and um, those result in significant morbidity um, and mortality that, again, I think is underrepresented and not talked about. So hopefully I'll um, enlighten you guys a little bit about it. If you look at cardiovascular disease as a whole, you can see it's a big problem, particularly for women. In the mid-1970s, um, this curve looks at sort of cardiovascular mortality trends, looking at all cardiovascular disease for men versus women. And you can see a steady decline in the blue dotted line, which is men, from the 1970s, where a lot of awareness about cardiovascular disease began. Unfortunately, what you also see is that the red line is just straight, um, and it has not met the same, uh, or has not gone in the same decline as men. And in fact, since the mid-1980s, more women are dying of cardiovascular disease than men. So an important thing to talk about. So what am I talking about in terms of cardiovascular disease? Again, as I mentioned, it's the buildup of this of plaque and disease, the same process that can happen in the heart and the other blood vessels, the blood vessels that go to the brain, the arms, the aorta, which is the biggest blood vessel in your body, your intestines, your kidneys, your legs, et cetera. And I'm going to very quickly, I only have 20 minutes here, it's a big topic, um, I'm going to very quickly try to just cover a little bit just to get a little bit of a better understanding of the other um, diseases that are associated with cardiovascular disease outside of the heart. Um, first and foremost, um, this disease, when you get atherosclerosis or plaque buildup in the blood vessels that go to the brain, namely the carotid arteries, is actually one of the most common causes of stroke. Um, often, this is 
This can be due to a num number of different things. Usually a little piece of plaque or thrombus can go up into the brain or the entire blood vessel can close off. But regardless, when you look at the numbers uh, in terms of stroke in women, they're frightening. Stroke kills two times as many American women as breast cancer. Uh, more women than men die of stroke, and more, women suffer greater disabilities. So they have, they have strokes, um, um, and they're unfortunately more disabled on, um, afterwards compared to men. And there's also this little bit alarming younger surge of stroke um, uh, occurring within women, um, which we are still kind of trying to figure out what's going on with that. The when cardiovascular disease affects the largest blood vessel in the body, a lot of different things can happen. The aorta, which I mentioned is the largest blood vessel in the body, comes off the heart and comes down your abdomen and then splits to go down your legs. A lot of different things can happen, but one of the things is that the blood vessel can basically kind of fall apart and become what we call degenerated and be, turn into an aneurysm. Aneurysm, I don't know why this is just auto going forward. Um, aneurysms is basically when the aorta becomes like a balloon. And just like a balloon, when the aneurysm gets too big, it can rupture or pop, which is incredibly associated with incredibly high mortality rate. Um, aneurysms, unlike some of the other things I'm going to talk about today, they do occur more often in men. This is the disease process that killed Albert Einstein. Um, it actually also happens to be the disease that killed Lucille Ball. Um, when I started as faculty here, my first ruptured aneurysm was a 70-year-old woman. And she was this thin, thin woman who just, it just wasn't on the radar of her primary care physician to even think about this. Because what we're taught in medical school and what a lot of people think about is that this is a disease of older smoking men. And so if you don't think about it and if you don't know about it and don't look for it, then what happens is you get a ruptured aneurysm. That woman spent three months in the hospital. Fortunately, she's, she survived. but. It was a big problem. The other thing about triple A's, despite the fact that they're more common in men, they rupture more often in women. They typically present later in women. Um, and then women have a similar number of deaths than men. So they happen less often, but they die more often. Um, they get repaired less often, and there's a lot of different reasons for that, which I don't have time to get into. And they have a higher number of complications. So clearly important to still consider and think about. The most common problem outside of the heart um, that the, it, cardiovascular disease um, is associated with is called peripheral arterial disease. And I'm going to spend the most amount of time talking about this. And basically what peripheral arterial disease is, this buildup of plaque and disease within the blood vessels that go to your legs, which results in a decrease in blood flow and not, at, and, and not enough blood flow reaching for the metabolic demands of your legs. There's a lot of different symptoms. The majority of patients actually don't even realize they have this. Um, they're asymptomatic, but as the decrease in blood flow increases, you can have pain, particularly pain with walking, which is a symptom called claudication. Um, sometimes when the blood uh, flow decreases so much, you have something called rest pain or pain just with sitting there. Um, and then as it even progresses, you can unfortunately get wounds, gangrene, which can lead to amputations and so on. So why I care about PAD? Why do I come and talk and say, I don't want to focus on the heart for one day, I want to talk about the rest of this? body is because it's incredibly common, it's deadly, it's underdiagnosed, and it's undertreated. So I think it really deserves some more attention. 8 to 12 million Americans have peripheral arterial disease, um, but again, the majority are asymptomatic, so a lot of people don't even realize that they have it. About 1 million Americans complain of new symptoms of PAD a year. And the prevalence uh, increases quite dramatically with age. There is some um, protection, premenopausal protection of, of, of hormones, it seems, for peripheral arterial disease. Um, but pretty much after um, menopause, the rate um, of peripheral arterial disease increases uh, quite significantly. You can see in this large, um, it's called the Rotterdam study, a large population-based study, you can see that the rate by the time over 85 of 57%. 57% um, prevalence, so every other person with peripheral arterial disease, pretty significant. And this also was this disease that was thought of as a smoking man's disease, but it turns out it's just not. If you look at this graph, again, a big population study, you can see that actually the rates are quite similar between men and women with PAD, and I'll talk a little bit more about that. 
Again, like a lot of these other cardiovascular problems, women with PAD typically present with more severe and more advanced disease. And there's a lot of different explanations for this, probably um, that are beyond the my time limit here. Um, women tend to have smaller blood vessels um, and therefore may have less treatment options, uh, which can be a problem, particularly if they're presenting later with more advanced disease. Um, and women may have worse outcomes. And I'm saying may because the truth of the matter is we don't know. Because all of the studies have not been really powered or haven't really had enough enrollment of women for us to really even know um, because they just it wasn't they did not believe women had this problem so PAD is deadly and this is a really big deal PAD is deadly it increases your risk just having PAD even if you match everything else with someone in terms of your age and your other medical problems um, it increases your risk of stroke and heart attack and death substantially in fact the diagnosis of PAD is a higher stroke and heart and or heart attack, stroke and death rate than coronary disease in and of itself. So it's a pretty significant marker of severe cardiovascular disease. And this chart just compares severe peripheral arterial disease to some um, common cancers, including breast cancer, colon cancer, and non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. As you can see, uh, PAD is more deadly than colon and rectal cancer and breast cancer. PAD is underdiagnosed. I keep saying it because it's thought of as a man's disease, but quite honestly, even in men, it's somewhat underdiagnosed. And I think the reason, a lot of the reason is, is because it's asymptomatic for a long period of time. You have it for a long time before you realize you even have symptoms for it. The, this partners program was this very large population-based study where they screened everybody within this um, population, and they found that 44% of the patients that they found and diagnosed with peripheral arterial disease were diagnosed because of this study, meaning they were not diagnosed before, did not know they had it. And of, um, and only 83% of the patients who already had the diagnosis even knew that they had it. And patients who had peripheral arterial disease were just not as intensively managed as patients who had heart disease. Just really goes to this whole fact that heart disease or coronary or peripheral arterial disease just hasn't been highlighted and focused um, as much as heart disease. Per, uh, peripheral dis arterial disease is underdiagnosed, again, most likely because a lot of the patients are asymptomatic. Um, but about only about a third of patients who even develop symptoms um, seek health, seek treatment or seek um, attention of their health care providers. And I think a lot of the times I explain to you the pain, pain with walking could be a million different things. It could be peripheral arterial disease. It could be osteoarthritis. It could be your knees. It could be a lot of different things. So a lot of people just kind of take an aspirin and or take an Advil and um, and sort of suck it up and don't bring it up to their primary or to their health care providers. However, even patients who are asymptomatic have an increased rate of heart attack, stroke, and death. So an important, again, important thing to diagnose even if they don't have symptoms. And PAD is undertreated. If you look at the over 10 million Americans with PAD, only about a quarter of them seek treatment, even though a whole half of them probably have symptoms. Okay, so I'm going to quickly, in the interest of time, um, just go through some of the risk factors for peripheral arterial disease. These are very similar to coronary artery disease, um, age, as I talked about already, um, diabetes, smoking is very, very uh, big one, hypertension and hyperlipidemia. And the, um, there's really no great guidelines, but the general guidelines is anyone who has diabetes, who smokes, who has hypertension, or is older than 55 should be screened, which you can get screened today, right outside, if you're interested. And so how do you get screened? The truth of the matter is it's a very simple, easy test. It's called ABIs, and it basically checks blood pressure in your arms and check blood pressure in your legs, and you compare them. If the blood flow in your legs is higher or the same as the blood flow in your arms, then that shows that you have no significant narrowing or blockage um, of the flow going to your legs. Um, it is 95% sensitive and 100% specific for peripheral arterial disease. So a simple, quick, and easy test, as you can see, um, we're doing outside can give you a lot of um, a lot of answers. Um, I'm not going to have a lot of time to talk about treatment for PAD, um, but most importantly, it's this awareness that you have this cardiovascular disease and these risks that come with cardiovascular disease. So lifestyle modifications um, and treatment of your underlying problems, such as smoking cessation, um, weight loss, healthy diet, treatment of your high cholesterol, diabetes, so on and so forth. Um, exercise has been 
um, clearly demonstrated to substantially improve walking distance and substantially improve the symptoms of, um, of uh, intermittent claudication in particular. Um, so you basically can actually train your body to build new blood vessels or increase the number of blood vessels if you can push through and exercise on a regular basis. Um, treatments, antiplatelets have clearly been demonstrated primarily to decrease the rate of all those other scary things that they keep talking about, coronary disease, MI, stroke, death. Um, so the main benefit is to take those for the cardiovascular disease um, benefit. Um, there is one FDA-approved medication for peripheral arterial disease. It's called Silastazole. It works Eh, so so. Um, there's some limits um, in, in terms of who can try them, but if it works for people, it does help, but unfortunately, it doesn't work for everyone. And then, of course, there's a lot of different surgical treatments, which is which is what I do, but I don't have time to talk a lot about it. But um, it really goes from anywhere from stents and balloons going from the inside of the blood vessels, a lot like what you hear people are doing in the heart, to traditional sort of larger surgeries and bypasses. And then, of course, unfortunately, sometimes. Um, inevitably, we have to proceed with amputation if the disease has um, gone too far. So in summary, I've hoped I've helped you realize that um, the picture of cardiovascular disease doesn't just look like this anymore, uh, but also looks like this. And I hope I've also clarified that cardiovascular disease is not just about the heart, um, but also involves a lot of um, a very significant um, and um, important other uh, problems such as stroke, um, aneurysms, and uh, PAD. Thank you.